Right. Hey, Rapadu, oh, welcome man. to the newest Cheap Podcast Live, the unprofessional live show about professional wrestling. I am a Dave Hustle Loyalty Respect Rudden. Yeah. I am Henry, uh, you don't want none, Gilbert. Uh, Brett, there's nothing really for me to add. <laughs> Brett Jizz Towel, Elsa, just like that's, Scott right there. That's not what uh, I, I don't need that. As, as we've <laughs> done for the many, many weeks of Cheap Podcast Live, we're going to go through some of the biggest uh, matches and events of the wrestling week mm-hmm. and chat with y'all about it. Uh, Super Dragon declares Night Dehumidifier. Hello, ladies. This is Brandolph. JJB Sterling. Uh, Twitch needs to get shit together. So, John, more, yeah. yeah, John Cena made his return on Raw. It was pretty much the only thing that happened on Raw because they were facing off against uh, Game 7 of the NBA Conference Finals. Yeah. Oh, and, conference Finals. And NHL. So, like, the only yeah. thing that happened of note that will go down in history books is that John Cena returned during halftime. They like they specifically yeah. timed it so he would oh. come out and have his confrontation with AJ Styles. Oh. That's why we're having it shown as a match and it wasn't a match. Uh, but yeah, like that was the only thing. It was like AJ had a heel turn after weeks of uh, not kind, heel turning of kind of being at odds with his uh, J- Japan the club, buddies. The baby. Yeah. yeah. No, I and I don't know what exactly happened. So I gotta say, I'm, down for me. well, I'm tired of shows that don't. I when I was growing up, man, <laughs> Raw would have a killer thing and it would keep you in the overrun. Now these days are like the coolest thing that'll happen on Raw usually happens at like nine fifty or something. Yeah. Like not even in the third hour. And they wonder why people don't want to watch the whole fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it was basically after being teased that he might join up with the club. Uh, I finally did. After you know, you could assume after months of losing all of most of his big matches, especially pay per view matches, despite trying really hard, he never always seems to come up a little short. Yeah. And aside from That's a WrestleMania thing, appearance, uh, John Cena had not been seen since February, yeah. and so uh, sorry, not since December. And so this was his big return night on America Night uh, <laughs> Memorial Day. And he gets interrupted by AJ, and just the sight of AJ and Cena in the ring yeah. together was yeah. pretty wild. And it started out AJ like, "You're the best, and I want to say hello," but quickly turned into, "Oh, let's have a tag team match against my former friends." No, I'm actually joining my former friends, and AJ has a heel turn. Mm-hmm. I, for one, I will say I liked that it was unexpected. I think mm-hmm. the the entire universe thought that it was just going to be, especially since it's America Day, uh-huh. John Cena is going to battle Rusev <laughs> again for the United States title, with, yeah. which he just won. Mm-hmm. Instead, uh, uh, Rusev's going back to his old staple of uh, beating up black guys. I'm, He's going to fight I Titus know, O'Neil. I don't know shit about wrestling for the most part, yeah. but this does, does this not seem like a giant vote of confidence for AJ Styles yeah. from yes the organization? No. So, look, I'm an unsatisfiable wrestling fan. <laughs> And but were you not happy when Kevin Owens was going oh, up against John Cena? Oh, I was. But so AJ Styles just spent two months losing to Roman Reigns. Mm. And he's not going to... He'll maybe get one win, but you yeah. don't win in John Cena's returning feud. But AJ can look great in losing. And though I am hoping my fantasy booking is that at... Money in the Bank, which uh, me and Brett will be attending live. Finn Balor will make his appearance and ah. help jo- uh, AJ Styles beat AJ S- uh, John Cena. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, th- the one thing I'm thinking of is, like, John Cena never loses twice in a row. Mm-hmm. Not even to Brock Lesnar, when Brock Lesnar had, yeah. like, the best year in, like, WWE history. Beat, when broke he really the streak. should have beat him yeah. twice in a row. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I don't know, I feel like because... If John Cena's going to get his win back on Nintendo 64, yeah. it'll be at SummerSlam. So yeah. I feel like this could be the opportunity where he'll win in June and July, and then Cena will just commandingly win in August. But it'll at least be two wins for AJ Styles. Mm-hmm. That's my that's my pie in the sky with, with Artie Pie. It's all Artie Pie in the sky. <laughs> well, as a fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling, it's also funny to see this coming together because in New Japan, for a long time, he had a... Uh, AJ Styles had a long feud with Hiroshi Tanahashi, who mm. many people call, you know, the Japanese Cena, mm. which he's booked the same way of like, you can only, he's super strong, he rarely ever loses, he definitely rarely loses twice, and he's, and the even joke was in fandoms like, wall, Tanahashi wins. Mm. And so it's funny to see him now becoming the bad guy against another unbeatable monster. Man. Yeah. 
I mean, there was not a lo whole lot else of note on on this week's Raw. Oh, no. I, I did like seeing like Enzo Amore finally wrestled again after <laughs> getting his face thrown right into a rope yeah. uh, two months ago. So, so that was worth Nintendo still. says. I look forward to Hank getting upset with Cena kicking out of kicking out clean from ten Styles yeah. clashes. Oh yeah, get the, ready. The main event, which I should have loved because it's got like six of my favorite dudes. It mm -hmm. was Cesaro, Dean Ambrose, and Sami Zayn against Del Rio, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens. Mm. But it felt like a house show main event. It's where It's like SmackDown main event. Maybe. Yeah, like all the good guys hit their finishers in a row, and the match is over. Everybody goes home happy. It, but could, just because the, the WWE knew, like, oh, we're going up against the one of the biggest basketball games of the year, uh, we can't we can't have actual developments happening here. No. We should have all just played chess against one another. Well, and yeah. even, like, it also had a thing I really hate, and, like, I love Stephanie McMahon as a bad guy, but when she does stuff of, like, taking Charlotte to task yeah. and saying, like, Charlotte, you're a jerk, and you just hide behind your father, and, and Charlotte tries to reply with, like, it's funny coming from you because that's what people would say about you, then Stephanie's just like, fuck you, bitch, you shut yeah. up right now, and you suck, and I'm the best, and then Charlotte just kind of stares at her because yeah. she's not allowed to say And anything. even by, like, first segment standards, which are always, like, the dumbest, talkiest garbage for uh, wrestling shows. Like, I'll always, almost always skip over them. But this week's was especially terrible because it was Stephanie and Shane coming out to say, we're going to do the split uh, roster draft mm -hmm. thing when SmackDown goes live in July. We have no other information. Let's stretch yeah. this out to 15 minutes. The New Day comes down and makes you guys dance. And But, like, there's nothing of value added. Like, nothing new that was that that wasn't in a like two paragraph story on wwe.com no well if i want to complain about another thing it was that <laughs> um uh well first off that sasha banks made her return to wrestling on main fucking event mm. fuck that man uh like she is way bigger than main mm. event way bigger but also i want to compliment wwe on making a very good seth rollins mm. uh return special on yeah, wwe dude. 24 oh, yeah. but why is he being the shittiest bad guy ever after everyone just wants to cheer for him? And most of the time, yeah. people like the bad guys, right? Well, if you want, like, more of the proof that, like, Please. nothing happened on Raw, Seth Rollins literally said nothing and did nothing. He went, uh, Roman Reigns came out and did his I'm, I'm, a, I'm the guy speech. Mm -hmm. Seth Rollins comes out to ringside, doesn't say anything, doesn't go in the ring, turns back. Then head, runs towards the ring like he's going to sneak attack Roman, but then he just walks to the back again. Like doesn't mm. say a th single thing. He even goes he goes back to get a microphone so he can say nothing. <laughs> like literally no words. Yeah, it was just the most it, like after so many weeks of like good to great Raws, it was just a shame that this one was like they just mailed it in because they knew they had to compete against basketball. Yeah, J.J.B. Like like, Sterling says they love Rollins' new crosshair logo. Um, yeah, I feel like that, but it's like Rollins. Rollins should have come back as a good guy, and <laughs> mm. people want to cheer him. And that twenty-four video, twenty-four. Nighty Midifier so says, "Good guy." Nighty Midifier says, "Seth Rollins has to be evil. Uh, he was mean to John Stewart." Yeah. <laughs> Going up against John Stewart, your instant heel for life. But he should have come back as a good guy, especially when. Did you guys watch that uh, doc? Nope. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, him talking about. I loved him telling the story of like wrestling AJ Styles in like two thousand three. Mm -hmm. And, and also hearing AJ um, talk about how he was going to be the future of the business and then him talking about what a big fan of Rob Van Dam he was. Mm -hmm. Like, it made you love the, the guy. The Rob Van Dam portal on his wall. Yeah, yeah. Just like that that, so great. JG, so I want Rob, Rob Van Dam to return just for that. JJB Sterling is asking, where does Orton fit into all this? Uh, he's due back soon, and I don't mm -hmm. hate the guy nearly as much as most wrestling fans. Me neither. Yeah. You'll get sick of him when he comes back. <laughs> like, you always do. Everyone always does. I'm wondering if they're going to just save him for the brand split and to say, like, yeah. and announce for Raw, Randy Orton. Yep. I am a horse yeah, in my head. Peace for me is pointing out, so with the WWE 24, how am I supposed to hate Rollins? Yeah. I saw him struggle. I yeah. want him to be awesome. Yeah. That's my whole point there. Dude, there's it's... this one part where his, he's, his <laughs> leg is in this, like, torture device that where it just, like, jerks it up and down. I'm like, oh my god! I don't. Uh, so Even if my knee was fine, I would, I would hate that. If anybody tells you Rollins banned, they're probably a liar. Uh, no, <laughs> I like the joke, Sotanga. I think it's perfect. Uh, I think so, it's perfect. Uh, before we move on to NXT, any other uh, particular comments of note? Uh, Tranquil Bez is asking, do you think Vince McMahon is punishing uh, AJ Styles for be just being involved in TNA for so long? It's weird. You can say 
maybe kind of like there is this sort of like like kind of happened with Goldberg and everybody who, or Sting mm-hmm. where it's like you come from another organization you're going to eat shit for a couple months but you're still in the main event well, like a couple years though well it, yeah it's I put it on two levels because I do think AJ Styles is being uh, punished. Like, he's not going to get to win because the TNA guy doesn't get to win. Like, yeah. that's not what they're going to do. And I feel like it'll be like when um, Chris Benoit, I know it's the bad name to say, but <laughs> when Chris Benoit started there, he had to lose for a ton of times. And uh, then finally they let him lose enough that they felt like, oh, now he's a WWE guy, so it's okay. Yeah. I feel like and we're that's o- where AJ's yeah. in it. I feel like we're over that hump now. I don't with, think so. With man. AJ. I don't think that's He's got to get at least feels. one win over John Cena. And I just hope it's not like a Wyatt style. Like, I mean, everybody had to help. I yeah. mean, that's what he has the fucking club for. They yeah. are going to do that. All right, as long as they don't have a little kid that's sings in the club oh my god that was uh, that played on john cena's fear of having children because he doesn't yeah. want <laughs> i wonder if it's really just because he's buried so many make-a-wish kids yeah. and he's just like i can't have a child. Yeah. all right here we go uh, all right so yeah nxt uh better week than usual like the one thing i rag on for nxt is jobber matches mm-hmm. like one could be good but when like most of the show is predetermined like Determined, but matches where you can just immediately tell who's going to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I didn't have that this week. Every single match, I thought like either guy has a chance here. The the match that we're showing on the screen is a perfect ten tie Dillinger against Buddy Murphy. So Buddy the, the, Murphy, not Mur- just Murphy. Yeah, Murphy and Blake, Blake and Murphy, the BMs. Uh, <laughs> they they broke up and their manager Alexa Bliss left them too. Mm-hmm. But it was just so awkward when. Ty Dillinger had his match against this guy. I'm like, wait, are they just gonna call him Murphy? Because like for like Bro, well over a year when they were attack team, they were Blake and Murphy. They almost never said their full names. Mm. I forgot his first name was Buddy. <laughs> uh, Character name that is not. A yeah, name. but yeah, like I thought in that case, this guy's just broken up with attack team. He could possibly win. And also, Ty Dillinger is like the new. Uh, like Juice Robinson or Bullfit, where it's this guy will be on your takeovers to lose. Yeah, you know? but it, I was I was pleasantly surprised that they, in this case they realized like ten is almost becoming the new yes. I love it. Ten, he's, ten. He's the ten. perfect ten. He that's the new. He's the new handsome boy gimmick, mm-hmm. where he he's the perfect ten. So he comes out and he flashes his, like both hands ten. Uh, sometimes we'll like have a sign, like a little number sign that says ten. Well, and even when people are more popular than him, they still play off it. When Nakamura oh, faced yeah. him, perhaps they did the ten. I did like thing, the, yeah, and then did the he ten chanted and eleven, like, yeah. and then they chanted eleven for Nakamura. They're like uh, eleven, eleven, eleven. Uh, piece for me is saying anyone else miss Bailey being the champ? Uh, Suka's yeah. awesome, but Bailey's energy is so good. Yeah, it's weird that I think. I think they have long-term plans for Bailey, where she's yeah. gonna not be. She is gonna rematch with Oscar, but they didn't want to do it in, at the June takeover, which is why they're instead having uh, Nia Jax face her. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I. But so you said Ty won, right? Yeah. And there was also uh, so Elias. Blake's not long yeah. for this world. Though. Yeah, probably. Uh, there was also Elias Sampson against. Uh, I'm blanking on who. He, oh, Austin Aries, where it was like yeah. Elias Sampson. Still hasn't dropped to that jobber level yet, so he could have possibly won. And then uh, the revival against Gargano and Ciampa. Yeah, which that was weird because only one of those teams has a match on uh, next Wednesday. That I'm, was strange. I am a little bit iffy about this uh, this payback because it just seems like takeover. Yeah, sorry. Uh, where. The matches just seem too cut and dry. Like, they have, like, like there's no way American Alpha loses. I don't think Oscar's gonna lose. Yeah. Uh, Samoa Joe and Finn mm. Balor. That one maybe could be up in the air because who knows where Finn yeah. or Joe are going. Yeah. Like one of them will probably be on SmackDown when that changes in July. But who? Mm. Uh, well, as much as the fans at Full Sail would hate to hear this, like the Full Sail takeovers is basically turned into in your houses of the of '96, yeah. which means nothing really My happens house? on an. Mm. <laughs> Nothing really happens on it in your house. It's just, it's just filler matches. Well, not filler, but yeah. there you won't see major title changes usually there. I think. So I think is what at. the whole the end is signaling is mm-hmm. the suggestion that it's, it's it's not only the end of the Samoa Finn feud, but mm-hmm. also the end of some kind of format of yeah. maybe from now on they won't be just takeover blank. It'll be 
pay-per-view names yeah. or, or I mean, some kind of pre- presentation. There's change. been a little bit of a hubbub lately because the August NXT event, which happens the day before yeah. uh, SummerSlam. A sequel to their biggest ever NXT event yeah. the year before at Barclays Center. Yeah, but they have, like, they pull tickets. They pull, like, some of the names on it. So people don't know what's going to be going on. And like, weird. Yeah, like, who knows? That hopefully, because there's only four matches and there's, like, supposed to be a, a new luchador guy debuting. But, like... Dr. Uh, Droom suggests NXT makeover. Yeah. Ah. But uh, hopefully they'll have something during that show which addresses, like, yeah, what's happening with the next one? Like, yeah. It, something strange is going on there. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I think if it is the... It feels like the end of Finn is coming. Yeah. And that it's setting up for the Las Vegas show, like, a uh, premiere at Money in the Bank. But also just that they've, like, I don't know. Where does NXT fit in in the brand split era? Yeah. Do they really want a third brand? And I also feel like eventually the fear was Vince McMahon will fuck up NXT yeah. and this good thing. I mean, I think SmackDown becomes NXT, and NXT on Wednesdays is the superstars of NXT, which uh, has kind of been for months now where it's like, jobber match is fine. Like, well, because they, film, a place it, for they that. film it a month in advance. They yeah. just film a month in one day. And, I mean... It, it, take that into account. Samoa Joe and whoever the big stars of NXT could still mm-hmm. record those in full sale once a month, yeah. and then tour with SmackDown the rest of them. Like that's not impossible. So but it does seem grueling. So before we move on to Lucha Underground, any uh, any comments from the uh, from the crowd? Uh, I only crapped one because it made me laugh. Yeah. Uh, Word Nintendo says the big question about SmackDown coming to Tuesdays. Uh, does anyone give a fuck about what day TNA will go to? Oh, man. I mean, they should just stay on Tuesdays and yeah. be later. Just do 10 p.m. Tuesdays. That's I'm going to say they should go to bank holidays. What's, <laughs> like, a rare day? Yeah. <laughs> did you see that clip? Yeah. Everybody out there, did you see that clip of Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy having their big showdown and talking about, like, we shall end this where it all began. And, yeah, and, and then, like, and and uh, Matt Hardy has straight up like Bill Murray in um in Kingpin hair. It's mm-hmm. just insane. Kind of mixed with Beethoven. That's what somebody yes. is. It's the TNA clip. Yeah, and and part of that promo was a fake baby being thrown at Jeff Hardy to distract him. Yes. But, what do you uh, do, man? Yeah. So uh, we've also got uh, Lucha Underground, which uh, had some good matches. I mean, uh, I. I hate to be contrarian and say, like, Lucha Underground is kind of getting into a formulaic nature, but, like, again, they have, like, two big title matches, and they... And nothing, like, yeah, and and Yeah, and the titles don't change, and yeah. it's just... I don't know. I, I, I'm i hoping that they're, like, just building up to, like, a really explosive end of the season, because there's, like, so many weird storylines, <laughs> like the infomer- infomercial manager... Infomercial manager? Uh, the... The cops who are undercover at Lucha Underground, just some weird stuff. And I did like the main event just because it's one of those like, like there's so much of Lucha Underground is guys in masks flipping around. But uh, like, the main event as of late has just been like beefy dudes who can still move around, but like really big dudes beating the crap really out of each huge. other. I wonder if that's them trying to prove that they're not just the flippy company. They're just like that they. <laughs> Well, because really, there are four of their top guys that they are setting up as like any of these guys could be the number one good guy in the company are Rey Mysterio, mm-hmm. Prince Puma, Dragon Azteca Jr., mm-hmm. and Phoenix, who mm-hmm. are have, have variations on basically the same mm-hmm. flying small guy gimmick. Hey, Aimbot Master says the skeleton table was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, but I, that's why I did love seeing like. Having Matanza mm-hmm. kill all the other monsters, yeah. like spend a week killing. First, he destroyed uh, Mil Muertes. Mm-hmm. Now, he even destroyed the machine cage mm-hmm. in in a crazy Pentagon. hard hit match. Yeah, and Pentagon, like that's showing how big Matanza is now, and it makes you yeah. go like, who's going to stop him? My favorite moment of that show is probably like the they also had a rematch for the uh, the trios championship. So it was Johnny Mundo. Uh, PJ Black and Jack Evans against uh, the Rey Mysterio trio. And Prince Puma, like, showed a little bit of, like, character growth. Like, yeah. la- the last week, the the heel team, the Rudo team, cheated to beat Rey Mysterio's team. And this time, Prince Puma was like, no, nah, I'm going to kick you in the balls now. They, of course, they got disqualified, but it was like, yeah, Prince Puma, like, sh- like kind of has been pushed away this season, whereas he was, yeah. like, the focal point in the first season. He was but just, the main guy. I don't know if I want to see an evil Prince Puma, but just, like, a Prince Puma that isn't afraid to kick a dude in the dick. Well, <laughs> and like I said, they need to differentiate more of those guys. Like, Dragon Azteca seems to be the new Prince Puma from the position of, like, the number one guy. 
and, or the guy they're trying to build up is like this is the goodest good guy and also who in plot line has to unite the families <laughs> of the Aztecs no if people are asking what my luchador name would be a no and I, Randolph asked that a no night humidifier it's not El Vaporizo <laughs> uh, it's El Kadong oh yes uh, El, yeah. and uh, El Bong Turbo Bison is pointing out there's a lot of uh, behind the scenes issues going on with uh, Lucha Underground so I'm not sure what is happening with it yeah, yeah. things I, well because WWE wants to take uh, uh, rightly so they've got a have introduced a lot of people at WWE two great wrestlers through Lucha Underground so they're trying to take people and that means they can't they can't count on some people to stick around. Yeah. I mean, so. Del Rio was like that the first season. He was a focal point and in like the WrestleMania of Lucha Underground and then just kind of left af- it after he the season. Lucha Underground? Yeah. I didn't know that. As was Molina, mm-hmm. like for one for one scene and then was gone by the next season. And I think that's also just what we got to get used to with Lucha because it's produced in a way that yeah. we're not used to. W- uh, like WWE, WCW, TNA, all are produced as weekly televised sporting events that mm-hmm. are fake. While meanwhile, Lucha Underground is like, this is a written, scripted television show, and we will film the entire season months before it starts airing. Mm-hmm. And that's that's they don't treat it as sports. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the big thing. It's a fighting league. They mm-hmm. talk about how much they love. It's not, it's not the preparation; it's the shooting schedule. I'm guessing, right? It is right? the shooting schedule. They're yeah. done with season three now. We won't see some of it until 2017. I think. Yeah, that's crazy. I was also happy to see like my favorite Lucha Underground dude. Son of Havoc, who is... I always... I just think of him as, like, the Daniel Bryan of Lucha Underground. Because he's... Cyclops? All, yeah. No, no, the no, brother. The beard yeah. Guy, the beard guy. But, uh, yeah, yeah, he's... Here. Like, he's been on the indies forever, and, like, is... It's weird that his success is coming in Lucha Underground with a mask on, but he's also, <laughs> like... He was the... The first season, he was a huge underdog, and it all culminated with, like, two people that he was feuding with, like, them becoming friends and winning the trio's title... And uh, now it's a little bit weird that he had a singles match and neither of his uh, tag partners were there. But I just, I mean, I'm happy to see him on the show. I hope that means well, they're building him in something because he actually won. Which, well, the like, other never problem happened is in season one. both of his teammates, and Helico and Ivelisse, are injured at different points of season two. Behind yeah. the scenes, not story. Ah. And so they kind of have to write around that. I Again, every time I see Cage, I just have to say, like, He's an impossible monster man who will yeah. die. We were just talking about Randy Savage on a, on a podcast to be heard mm-hmm. later. But in that, I talked about how, like, in 99, he showed up and was monstrous. Yeah. And it was cool at the time. But even then, people were saying, this is not good for your health. Like, this is, yeah. you're a man in your 40s. You should not be taking this. Well, he steroids. got bit by a radioactive spider on the set of Spider Man. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yes, that's yeah. right. Uh, oh, by the way, when talking about Lucha, we should segue briefly mm-hmm. into. Battle of Super Juniors talk in oh, yeah. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Featuring and Prince Puma in his... Uh, oh, ricochet, his yeah. original form. I think so, people keep saying Ricochet versus Will Ospreay. That's what we example. need to talk about. So Thank you, Aimbot Master. There's Battle of the Super Juniors, which is the yearly tournament of cruiserweights, as we would call mm. them. Smaller, high-flying wrestling guys. And they're doing that currently in Japan. And uh, previous winners have been uh, Eddie Guerrero, mm. Jushin Thunder Liger... Chris Benoit, Ugh. and uh, this year's is no exception in being impressive, but they there was one match that people couldn't believe, even though, so Will Ospreay is a relatively unknown mm. guy outside of England, mm. though, and now he's made his debut in Japan, and more Americans are hearing about him, and so his matches are now being exposed to a whole new audience, and you've got Ricochet, who hardcore fans are getting to know mm. thanks to Lucha Underground and more of his indie stuff. Both are guys who have never wrestled in WWE. They have a match in, in, in just a regular Battle of Super Juniors match, not even a, not mm. even like a the, the final yeah. match of it. And they steal the show. It is insanely choreographed, yeah. like crazy flips. They're moving at a mile a minute, and people are just like, oh, it's just a, some yeah. haters are like, it's just a spot fest. It's just flippy yeah. bullshit. So, like, I've only seen the gif. You've only seen gifs. Yeah. Where it's like nobody actually gets any offense off. Like uh, someone does a, like, a Hurricane Rana, and, that, and the guy lands on his feet off of that. And and like does a tries to do a monkey flip does a lands on his feet off of that and then they end up both in like ninja pose next to each other flipping in the middle of the ring yeah and uh my my dude i'm, I'm actually wearing a shirt vader actually pointed out like that's not wrestling <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's vader been, just yeah. keep your wiener under wraps yeah Don't every, tell people. And everyone else has basically been though like this is like wrestling can be many things it can be two yeah. giant dudes beating the shit out of each other like in the lucha underground main event 
Or it can be, yeah, two guys doing crazy flips in mm. front of uh, an yeah. audience that seems to really like it's it. It's so. performance. It's entertainment. Yeah. Like, that's, and, yeah, even just if you don't have time to watch the whole match, mm. just the gifts are, like, jaw-dropping. Yeah. Though the match is more easily available than ever because yeah. New Japan noticed, somebody in New Japan noticed that it had become an international yeah. hit. And so it's posted free on New Japan World and on New Japan's YouTube page. Yeah. So you can watch the 20-plus minute match. It is amazing. And in the, I saw one of the best just of it like pros like Chris Jericho mm -hmm. super into it who he is a former battle of a super juniors uh, red vet as well mm -hmm. and also Dave Meltzer mm -hmm. the top wrestling reviewer reporter in the world mm -hmm. he talked about how back in in, in 78 mm -hmm. when Ricky Steamboat first faced Ric Flair and they were doing matches old timers then complained they're not selling mm -hmm. right this is too <laughs> silly like it's the same complaint so he's saying it's cyclical uh -huh. and I think that Will Ospreay Ricochet match even though they've had that match before and will have that match again like I think it is a it is a very important match and could just be one of the most groundbreaking matches of its time. Uh, Without the Super Juniors, Stacy D Pro is predicting Danny DeVito versus Kerry Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's cool. I, uh, I do predict Ricochet Osprey having a rematch in the finals. Right. Am, I, Aimbot Master is wondering if they're going to do English dubs during the finals. So they I are. They are. Yeah, yeah, it'll be voiced by uh, the horrible, horrendous, awful <laughs> Kevin Kelly, <laughs> uh, Hermaphrodite, as uh, <laughs> The Rock called him. And uh, Steve Carino, who is much better than Kevin mm. Kelly, but not great. And but no Yoshitatsu. No, no yes. Yoshitatsu is back in the ring with his Triple H club. Ah, so uh, before we close this out, any uh, any further questions, comments from the uh, the cheap podcast crowd? I can't understand any of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch Battle of Super Juniors. Just look up New yeah. Japan's uh, pro wrestling thing. I'll even you know I was contemplating doing a post on it. I thought it was old news by the time they made it free on their thing. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'll put a post on the site to make our 18th. <laughs> wrestling post of the week on top of the my theorizing that Goldberg will soon be returning to WWE as an active wrestler mm. thanks to WWE 2K17 yeah. so thanks everybody for uh, participating in the chat and uh, making this episode of Cheap Podcast Live super fun uh, love talking with you guys all about wrestling every week Thursday at 3pm see you next week for more Cheap Podcast Live